Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Stuart Newbury from Positive Practice, and today I'm going to be presenting this webinar on building a better business in 10 steps. Thank you for attending this meeting. I'm just giving everybody a chance to just pop in before we start. Um, we are one minute in on the time given, so we'll just give it a couple of more seconds for anybody else wants to start. Um, whilst we're waiting, most of you will know Positive Practice. We're an accountancy firm and business advisor based in the Skipton Corn area, but we cover all of the UK and we have clients as far afield as New Zealand, Kenya, Corn, Lancashire, uh, Harrogate, Leeds, and even Birmingham. So we're international, I would say. I, I think we've given everybody a chance to pop in. Um, at the end, we will be having a Q&A session if anybody has any questions. Um, I did ask for questions before. We haven't had any so far, but we'll come across that later. Um, so let's proceed with today's webinar. I'm, pa I'm actually passionate about helping small businesses grow their businesses. It's important to understand that there's no magic bottle blade, however. Today, I'll share with you some practical things that you can improve your business, but there's no substitute for ongoing hard work. There's nothing like, there's nothing free in life, unfortunately. And working with your accountant in synergy will certainly help you do that. Of course, I'd say that being an accountant. Before we begin, I'd like to you can consider what a better business would actually mean for you. Would it be more profit? Or is it more time? Or is it just generally more than just those things? What do you actually want? And how will you balance work and play? What does the business actually need to deliver to you, the owner? Perhaps you're looking for a less stressful environment. Or what about actually enjoying going to work? How would that be? A better business is one that delivers the free freedoms, time freedom, mind freedom, and financial freedom. Today I'm going to share with you the 10 steps that can take you to achieving those three freedoms. Unfortunately though, as accountants, we see far too many clients not achieving these, working crazy hours and not spending as much time as they'd like to with their children and family, and generally getting burnt out. This is why we're here today. Think about your business and how what it needs to deliver to make you happy. Thinking about your business, who actually teaches you to run a, uh, run a better business? Your solicitor, your bank manager, did you learn it at school? Have you actually got a master's degree in business administration? Who do you think the best person to teach you to help and help you run your business better is? That's right, it's those accountants. Yes, we're blowing our own trumpet again. But how often do you set time aside to discuss with your client the forward thinking aspect of your business? and learn how to run a better business. Everyone in business needs an independent support. And by the way, that's what my business coach has taught me. Yes, I take my own advice. I get a regular outside view of how I'm running my business and what I can do to make my business better. I believe you should too. I'm sure you're the absolute expert in the technical aspects of your business, be that you're a motor mechanic, a salesman, 
a retailer, you know the day-to-day -day stuff of your business far better than I ever will. But today is part of a reflected on what you're not so good at. Now that might be the most common, not really understanding the numbers or creating and implementing a simple business plan that will help you achieve your goals. Perhaps you need to lead the business and make the team a bit better. These are the things that we can help you with. These things are things that you can simply improve without too much effort. We want you to make your business run better. And then we want to serve you to help achieve that. In the end of today, this is what we're planning to cover. The actual 10 steps. What, the what's and why's. Implementing best practice. The next steps and the options for support that we can provide. And then of course any questions that you may have. My compliments on you, to you for joining me today. And what I would suggest at the, by the end of this webinar that you've taken a piece of paper and a pen and written down at least three clear actions that you are going to take as a result of this meeting. The important thing is not only just writing those questions and all actions down, it's actually doing them. As I am often quoted as saying, a dream is just a plan without action. So let's not dream, let's plan and do the actions. Who do you want to be right now? The best mother, father, leader, life partner. It's important that you know or understand what it is exactly that you want in your life and to support that what your business can deliver to you to enable you to have the best life that you can have. This is where I would suggest you write three things down. Your absolute top priorities. But rather than thinking about what you're going to do in the next 40 years, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be before you retire? Let's think realistically. Let's think, what do you want to achieve in the next three years? Straightforward. That's only around just over a thousand 100 days away, it's only 36 months, it's only 156 weeks, it's a short time frame, but it's long enough that if you make it, start making changes today and work on it every day over those thousand plus days, three years time, your life can be totally different. You think of it this way. What do you want to achieve? If you change by 1% towards that achievement every day, in 100 days, you'll be there. That's just over three months. In three years, you'll be 10 times better. 1% improvement. Start small, build. And that isn't including any compounding effect building on that. So, think about this. What do you want to do? What do you want to be? What do you want to have? The choice is yours. You make the choice and then you make 
it happen by choosing what you do to achieve it. We can support you with that, we can help, but it's your choice and your actions are going to deliver it. I did say there was no easy ride, there's no magic bullet. This is where the work comes in. And if you saw the email that led you to this webinar, if you're one of my clients, I quoted Einstein doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is the sign of madness. Let's think about what you want to achieve and let's do something to achieve it, do something different. Whatever you write down as your three things that you want to achieve, make them specific. Don't say, I would love a lovely holiday. You might want to write down, I want to go to Kenya for a month. I want to visit the Bahamas. I want to stroll down the beach at Acapulco. The more specific your desires are, the more realistic they are in your mind. And that helps you achieve. Because you set a realistic, obvious, tangible goal. Just saying, I would like to be richer. What does that mean? Be specific. If you want to really be really specific, you use the SMART objectives. Specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timed. So you have a specific objective. It's measurable. You know when you've achieved it. It's, achie it's actually achievable. You might want to walk on the moon. Guess what? Probably not going to, ever. It needs to be re also realistic. Again, it's got to be something you can actually do. But it also has to be time back. We've already set the time limit. Your three years. Smart objectives. You naturally have to change. As I said a moment ago, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting it a different result is insanity. So you've got to be open to change. You've got to be open to new learning. How many new things do you think a five-year-old learns each day? How enthusiastic does that child become with the unembracing possibilities of the world around them? Everything's new. Everything is a challenge. When you learn to walk, when you stood up on your feet for the first time, previously I'm only having crawled, if you fell over that first time, like probably every one of us did, would you have actually just fallen over, got, I'm not going to walk, I'm going to crawl for the rest of my life? Because I didn't like falling down. Be open to challenges, open to learning. And at the moment, with the digital world that we're in, learning opportunities are everywhere. There's no excuse. There are online resources. There are free webinars. There's a whole periphery of resources that you can get your hands on. We have some that you can have for free. Use them, apply them, change. You don't have to be bound by what you've already done. But I would always caution you on the following. Just be careful. You need to be actually looking to achieve something. So hanging out on your phone and, and social media and watching cat videos ain't going to work. Ro enrolling on a course or a workshop, in online or in person, will work 
as long as it came down what the goals that you want. You might want to learn to paint. Is that going to help you in your retail store? Is that going to help you fix a car? You need to find something that is actually work, going to help you work. I would always encourage you to read more. If you've ever been into my office, you will know that there's a bookcase full of business books. On my phone, I think I currently have 270 audible books that I can listen to. The vast majority of those are business books because I'm still constantly learning. There's one I played today as I drove into the office on the, in the, on the car stereo. Small incremental things. Another book I could recommend. I would also encourage you to keep a journal of what you're learning so that you can revisit later what changes you've made and what impressions the new learning gave you. And over time, it's something to build on. And just as I said, don't hang out on your phone and watch cat videos. Turn the TV off. Spend some time reading, listening to podcasts, TV, news, not only depressing at the moment, but is it actually helping you? Now, if you're a journalist and you need to keep up with news, fine. But do you really need to know if Taylor Swift's boyfriend's just won the Super Bowl? That's entirely up to you. So here's the summary of what we just said. Resist that urge to our annual. Enroll on courses and workshops. Read more. Keep a journal. Switch off your TV. A journey has two points minimum. The destination and the start point. For, to ensure that you know where you're going where you're going to get your business to, you need to understand today where you are, good and bad, what's and all. First two steps of getting clear about exactly what you want to do are being open to change in that new learning. Step three is defining where you are now. If you use Google Maps to get directions, what does it ask you? It asks you where your starting point is. You need to know this simply because you need to get, have a route to get you from A to B. Making sure that the degree to which your owner and leaders are aligned in thinking. So if you're if you're a sole trader or you're a sole proprietor, this is easy. You've got to agree with yourself. But if there's more than one of you in the business, make sure that you agree and have a common destination to take that business. You'd be surprised how many times I've seen business partners who've got different objectives and of course they're pulling in different directions understand what activities that you actually do today actually generating the sales numbers the results that you are achieving if it's anything like the norm, 80% of your results result from 20% of your actions. Now it might be that 80% of your sales come from 20% of your customers. It might be that 80% of your profits come from 20% of your pro products. That 80-20 rule is called Pareto rule and it's a common theme. 
it's not always down to 80 20. It might be 79 21. It might be 82 18. But it's a rough estimate 80 20. And it's common throughout all these things. You'd be amazed. Understanding how many proposals that you have written and accepted, what your average sales value are, how many networking meetings you attend, all of these things, these are the activities. But if you're doing a lot of activities that generate no income or generate very little results, these are the ones that you may want to curtail. How engaged are you with your team to deliver your vision? Just like with number one, if you've got more than one leader, they need to be aligned. If you've got a team that work with you, you want them to be working towards the same goal. You want them to be supporting you in delivering your business going forward. What you don't want them to be doing is dragging you back, slowing you down, or diverting you from the course that you want to go. A study on employee engagement showed that only 30% of employees of a company were engaged. 52% were actually disengaged. 18% were actively, actively disengaged. Now that's 18% of them are actually probably working against goals that you're trying to achieve. Again, that's a generalisation, that, but this study goes across industries and across businesses. Studies also prove that businesses with engaged team members significantly outperform businesses without engaged team members. If you've got a team, make sure they're pulling in the right direction and supporting your growth. The measures that you take, the measures that you actually have in your reporting system need to be appropriate. So, if you measure footfall, if you're a retailer, retail stores sometimes measure footfall. That's the number of people coming into the shop. Now that's the measure. That shows you how busy the shop may be. But if you're looking to measure sales increase, if they're all window shoppers, browsers, you're measuring one thing and trying to report on another one. So what you need to do is it's all very well set a target, but you can't measure it. You're blind, flying blind. So measure things that can be measured. What the old saying is, what gets measured can get managed. So, we know what the sales are, you can measure that. You know what the volume of turnover is, you know staff productivity. You can measure all these things. If you can measure it, you can manage it. But what you can't measure are things like response to an advert because you haven't got a tracking code. You put an advert in a paper. You don't know how many people are actually going to look at that and then possibly even ring you on that unless you have, say, a tracking code. We have on our website a phone number that is unique to that website. It still comes to our landline, that number, but at the end of each week, I know how many people phone that particular number. Now, if they phone that number, I know exactly where they got it from because it's only on the, on the website. Therefore, I know how many people has lo have looked at our website and used that number. I can, me I can measure that. I can manage it. I can drive more traffic to our website. I can't make them phone, but I can at least drive more traffic. And if I see an upturn in on the calls from that number, I know that driving that traffic to that website is working because I'm getting more calls. 
your big five vulnerabilities right now. So, where are things most likely to break in the near future? For example, poor systemization, high team turnover, cash flow constraints, weak balance sheet. What are the five things that are concerning your business today? Looking through some of these to be too fast, I apologise. So, understand defining where you are now. Some points to, to consider. I said it before, you need a plan. I'm a great believer in that the 36 page business plan that your bank manager and probably in the past your accountant asked you to produce is old hat. It's probably sat redundant in a drawing in your desk if you have one. I would encourage you today to have a plan on one page. Your goals on that plan, probably no more than four pen goals. You might have five or six sub goals, but four main goals. Because you want to make sure that you're focused on achieving the important things. If you've got 28 different important things to achieve, um, have you? Have you really? You've probably got four. You might have three. Look, focus on no more than four. Cascading down to 90 days in that of action. I have a free tool that I will offer all of you at the end of this webinar. It's called the WWHM Plan. I have a little ebook on how to do it. It will show you how to draw a three year business plan. Take that down to then the next year one year business plan and from that one year a plan for the next 90 days and that's what this is talking about having a one page plan that you can drive down to what do you need to do in the next 19, 90 days 90 days for, for anybody who counting is 13 weeks it's a quarter of a year so in your three year plan You've got 12 of those 90 days. Three years, as I said before, it's a number of, you know, it's an, a, a large number of days. It's more than a thousand days. Trying to maintain effort for that is going to be hard. If you've got 90 days focused, you can work on that because 90 days is quite short. You can see results in that 90 days. Having no more than five KPIs. Previously, we talked about what gets measured. Having five key performance indicators will help you drive your business far faster than anything else. But your key performance indicators are yours. Now, it may be that you want to measure profitability. It may be you want to measure the number of leads that you generate. It may be the number of sales to new customers that you generate. Whatever those key performance indicators, they are yours. They are important to your business and probably specific to your needs. What I would encourage you to do is make sure that you not only have them recorded, but you monitor them. What gets measured gets managed every week. You keep a tally of what your key performance indicators are. Ideally, you should have a goal for each of them for each week. So if you want to have a sales target of £8,000 a month, right, you need to break that down. What's that per day? And you then start saying, right, did I make those, that many sales today? If not, tomorrow, you're behind your target. What are you going to do differently 
to not only get today's sales target, but also catch up from yesterday's shortfall. This is why we do it over a short period of time, because you can then judge your actions. Also, share your plan with your team so that they are working with you to achieve. And I will be honest, I practice what I preach. So here's my three year plan, one year plan, 90 day plan. So I'm actually practicing exactly what I'm preaching. I have that and every month our team goes through that and how we achieve it. But they also know what the key APIs are and the goals. So if you're visible, share it with your team. And if you do nothing else, make sure that you review it. Make sure you review your plan every 90 days. Because hopefully, every 90 days, you'll have achieved your objectives for those 90 days. Then you need to, you need to set some new objectives to get you on that road to success. If every business has a number of jobs that need to be done. You're probably going to be sat having 10 different hats on if you're a sole business owner. You're going to be the shareholder, director, leadership, CEO. You're going to do product and service development, operations, sales, marketing, finance, admin, human resources. You need to be making sure that you can not only cover those jobs, but also understand what each job is trying to achieve. What you should really try to do though is delegate some of those tasks. Do you need to be the finance person? Could you, for example, outsource your finance to, to us? Well, we do finance all the time. Do you need to do your quality fat return? We can do it. Do you need to monitor your tax every three months? We can do it. You can have someone actually do your human resources. You can outsource that. That's the cost if you have staff. Your key, your key role as a business owner is leadership and setting the direction and then helping achieve it. You've got to split those two between the strategic direction setting and the operational doing the jobs. It's very hard if you are a one-man band, but it's something you can do. Being a better leader. If you're again, if you're a sole trader, working for yourself, guess what? You you you're working for yourself. You're not going to be a better leader than you are. But if you've got a staff, you need to make sure that you are working effectively with your staff. Sometimes you'll you'll you may have found out if you work for other people that. Some place is not right good to work for. Why? Well, usually because there's a lack of trust between the employees and owners. No core values. You don't all believe in the same things. Now, not saying you all have to be the same religion and everything stupid like that, but in our business, we all think we're here to help our clients run more profitable businesses. We are not here to help them make blueberries. We're not here to make them do strange things. We are here to help you run more profitable businesses. My staff know that's what our goal is. That's what our core value is. How we do that is we work tirelessly on your behalf. We have a common value of 
openness and communication. If there's a problem, we tell you. If we find something that's wrong, we tell you. So openness and communication are a couple of our core values. If, you ever, if you've ever been to a meeting in a workplace and then after the meeting, there's effectively another meeting talking about what we've just talked about, that's a toxic workplace. After meeting meetings, you know if you, if you have those, even if it's just an aside that you start discussing things over, you didn't get it out in the proper meeting, you need, that's wrong. Highly stressful interactions are the norm. Screaming hab tabs. Conflict. Team members and owners meet, yeah. Throwing things. Having arguments. What you'll find as a result of all that is there's no team buying to the core purpose and goals. That's what happens when you have your toxic. So, for you to be a better leader and have a stronger workplace culture, you have to you have to agree those core values. You have to set and agree a purpose for your business. You have to memorize. Sorry, it has to be memorized and highly visible. On the wall in our office, we have our core vision, which is, and I can see it from the to help our clients run more profitable businesses, thereby enriching their lives. It's there. It's memorable. I didn't need to read it. I, I live it. We align the team's goals with that. So if our team's goal is not to help our clients run more profitable businesses, guess what? It ain't working. All of our people are here to helping our clients run more profitable businesses. And more importantly, when we when we actually succeed, we celebrate our success. And we hold regular team meetings and we discourage those after meeting after meetings. And we try not to play favourites. We're all a team. And we did and you know, if we have a toxic employee, I would look to get them out. Same with yourself. If someone's dragging your team down, you want them off your lifeboat. You don't want them bringing the whole ship down with you. Having fun at work is key. It sounds daft, but if you can have a laugh at work, there's something wrong. Um, you might say, well, I'm a funeral director or undertaker. It's not having a laugh at work. That's normal. Well, yeah, but I will guarantee there'll be moments where you need to break that tension. You may not laugh in the middle of a service, but over a coffee at the end of the day, that's where you have a laugh. So have a little bit of fun. Get someone independent to hold you accountable. A coach is someone who tells you what you don't want to hear and as, as you see what you don't want to see so you can be who you always know you can be. As I said earlier, I have a coach that helps me. I've coached sports before. The coach is there to help you, the athlete you achieve. That's what they're there for, to support, to encourage, to make sure that you have the capability and resources to do the best that you can do. They're not there to do it for you. They're not there to deliver on a platter that gold medal. They're there to encourage you to run faster. Building strong networks is another key. Consider the lifetime value of a client. You may sell one thing to that client. If that client comes back every single day for the next 20 years and buys the same thing every day, you know, in, the, in the past it'd be a packet of bags or 
a bottle of milk, guess what? That client isn't worth a bottle of milk to you. That client's probably worth 365 bottles of milk a year times 20. And the profit on that bottle of milk, that's the lifetime value of your client. Don't look at it as, oh, they bought a bottle of milk today. How often do they come back? And how can you encourage them to come back and buy more? That's the lifetime value of a client. Identify complementary businesses. So, I'm an accountant. I have a friend who's an IFA. I can't provide independent financial advice. But if I have a client who needs financial independent advice, I can refer to my friend. Vice versa, if he has someone who needs some tax calculations or needs to work it out of his business a little bit better, guess who he refers to? Build your connections. And give more, give more referrals. Because if you're known to give people more work, guess what? They'll be obliged, they'll think positively about finding work for you. Find out where your target markets are now. The old adage was, go fishing where the fish are. Don't fish in a lake where there are no fish. Find out where your target market is and be there. Use the intelligence that you have. I'm a great believer in getting involved in charity. You know, if you know us, you'll know that we support B1G1. We've given around 30,000 impacts. That's days of water, trees planted, bicycles for children in Africa, etc. We've done 30,000 of these things over the last few years. But we also provide services for a local food charity free because we can and it supports them probably more useful than me buying a tin of beans and giving them it every every few weeks but I, I will do all their annual accounts pro bono that's my support to them step nine monitoring your progress and have your targets. So I said kept you visible. We can set you up with nice pretty charts that show you where you are. The old saying, picture paints a thousand words. If you can see that line going up, guess what? The, line, the targets are getting there. If you see the line going red, that might mean you have to do something. Understanding your KPIs and having them visual just makes it easier for you to keep an eye on them. And you can see them a lot better than just having numbers. So if, the, if, it, if you use a traffic light system, because it goes into the red, you know there's an issue. If it's green, fine. What you need to do is measure, measure your KPIs and set out a way of presenting that information so that it's very easily understood and you can track it over time so these graphs here are you know bank balance over time you can see that at one point it's gone red you may have to be careful what i would also encourage you to do not only did i say keep enjoying yourself and have fun at work but also keep your well of happiness full life is short smile while you still have teeth which i thought was a cracker you know I, we're we're on this earth for a short time and if you're bloody miserable all of that time God help us. 
enjoy life. Do what gives you pleasure. Part of the three freedoms is to give you financial freedom to have your time to do what you want to do, which gives you time freedom to enable you to spend time on doing what you like to do. And that then gives you mind freedom because you don't have the stress and worries about things that you are worried about, concerned about. You're not worried about the lack of money in your bank. You're not looking about about how you're going to get through Monday mornings, pile of work. Three freedoms are there. This plan helps you achieve those. Summarise the ten, 10 step therefore. Get clear on exactly what you want. Be open to change and new learning. Define where you are now, what's and all. Make a plan. Get your organisational structure correct so that you can achieve that plan. Become a better leader. Build a strong workplace culture. Get someone independent to hold you to account. Build strong networks. Monitor your progress. Keep an eye on those KPIs. If you don't know where you're going, you don't know when you've got there. And if you're not measuring how far it is, where you've travelled, you may not know when you arrived. Keep your well of happiness full. Enjoy life. As I said, we've got a number of ways we can help you. The simplest way, we can provide you with a free WHM plan. That can be either, we'll provide you with a workbook and you can do it yourself. We can provide you with a workbook your, and you can book a, a free session with myself. And I'll spend an half an hour, 45 minutes going through and helping you draw up your own 90 day action plan, your, w, your three year plan, your WWHN plan. If you want to monitor your cash flow and want to report, that starts at around £297. If you want quarterly coaching where I can help you every three months, look at your plan, look at where, where you need to be. We're talking around £250 a quarter. We also have a 90 day business growth challenge, which basically is for, for £259, we support you over the first 90 days. And we have a guarantee that if you don't make at least £5,000 or save £5,000 in your business over that 90 days, and you've actually worked and done the work over the 90 days that we've set together, you don't pay. We give you your money back. So you've got nothing to lose. £250, £259 cost, you get guaranteed to get £5,000 return on that investment. Almost 20 times. That's two. We offer all our clients a free complimentary client review. If you want to have a look at how we can help your business grow, we can set that up. If, if you're a prospect and want to understand how we can possibly help your business, we have a, what we call a proactive accounting meeting. This is where we, we get to understand what you want with your business and then we can understand how we may be able to help you achieve that. Those last two complimentary client review, proactive accounting meetings are free. So that's where we are. Um, actions for you to do. You should be writing down your three actions, the three things that you need to do to add value to your business and achieve, help you achieve your goals. A problem is an opportunity to create a project. So if you've got a problem that your business is facing, think of it this way. I can do a project to overcome this problem. And that's where your actions start. Doing nothing should not be an option. I've said it a number of times already. Doing the same thing over and over again 
and expecting a different result is madness. Doing nothing is not really an option at all. You won't change, you won't get anywhere. At this time I would ask if there are any questions. I can see from the chat box that we don't have any questions. I will give you this offer. If you could have a question that you would like to ask, but don't want to ask it now or feel that you can't ask it in this forum, contact me at Positive Practice. So you've got our phone numbers, which if you don't know, is 01756 709210 or 01282 864800. They're the phone lines. If you want to email me, is Stuart, sorry, S Newbury, that's S N E W B E W R Y at P hyphen practice.com. Ask any question you want, we'll answer those free without any obligation. I would like to thank you for your time and I hope you found this useful. If you have and you want to give me any comments, Please do so. I've just given you contact details. I will close the meeting now and I will thank you very much for your time. You've been really patient with me stuttering, probably using the same phrases over and over again, and more importantly, using the same quotes, especially the Einstein one. I think I, I counted it four. It could have been five times. But hey ho. If you, if you know there's a really good quote and you like it, you should be using it. Thank you very much. I'm Stuart Newbury and we are Positive Practice.